Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis, and in this video we're talking about the Day 12 episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We'll talk about some of the discussion points and topics brought up in the episode, and at the very end I'm going to share with you guys a sneak peek of what's happening next time on the series. But before any of that, if you haven't seen the Day 12 episode, here's a link up here somewhere, and you can click on it and find out what we're talking about before we talk about it. Oh, wait a moment. Okay, we'll jump right in, but first I want to thank a few people who made today's episode possible. Well, there's, there's lots of people, and you know who you are, who have made today's episode possible through support through, uh, on Patreon and through PayPal uh, and everything. Uh, but there are four people that just recently, in the past couple of weeks, jumped on board and made May the double episode month that it was. And those people are Hoople's Cat, Julia Bradley, Paul Walker, and Chris at m1bullpup.com. That's his that's his screen name, Chris at m1bullpup.com. I checked to see what he sells there. It's like illuminators for rifle scopes. I I, I know what a rifle scope is. I have several of them. I, I don't want know why I would need to illuminate. I don't even know what that is. I'm sorry. But thank you guys all for uh, participating, jumping on board, making today's episode happening uh, happen, and making the whole uh, channel continue. Uh, if you are enjoying the channel and you would like to see it continue, you'd like to see these sort of dramatic episodes kind of keep going forward, you can join uh, you know, those four people and so many others who have gone to patreon.com and uh, you know, are supporting the series for as little as a dollar a month. Here's a link below. Uh, they also get access to behind the scenes content and uh, a lot of opportunities to help steer the plot of the show, appear on the show, all sorts of things like that that are available to anyone you know, at any level of um, of contribution over there on patreon.com and also you know paypal paypal.com too i don't want to disrespect all my my paypal helpers thank you all so much you guys keep it going so let's talk about today's episode today's episode is about plants specifically aloe vera i really do have aloe vera i did not let my aloe vera die although this this one's looking a little brownish i don't know i'm not sure what its deal is i have some other younger ones that i broke off from this aloe vera is really easy to propagate you just kind of take a piece of it you let, it let it dry out a little bit it's helpful if it's like a big bigger piece and has like a little bit of roots and stuff like that you know kind of starting to grow off of it but you just break it off you know peel off kind of the dried uh, dead stuff and uh stick it in some dirt and start watering it and it grows into a new plant. Really easy to propagate. Uh, and it's a very valuable plant and there are lots of valuable plants. And I don't want to talk specifically in this episode about aloe vera or specifically about any particular plants. What is this? Dock? I think it's kind of a sour dock. It's just a weed growing in the garden here. This one's edible. It tastes sour. Not very good. Wait, rhubarb. It tastes a little like rhubarb if you ever had rhubarb. Sour dock. Um, I don't want to talk about any specific plant in this episode, but just generally, I'm sorry, I'm not going to talk while I chew, but just generally about the value of plants and thinking ahead about what plants might be useful to you. I know as preppers, a lot of us stockpile a lot of medicines, and a lot of medicines are good way past their expiration date. I have a video coming up on that shortly where I'm going to share with you all my findings about which ones seem to be the ones that do last, which ones don't last, which ones are dangerous and everything. That's a, this a whole separate video. But the idea that people stockpile a lot of medi medications when they're preppers, that's kind of a common thing. That's a useful thing, but no matter what the medication is, eventually it's either going to expire, you know, over decades or decades, you know, depending on which medication it is, or you may run out of it. Uh, but the great thing about plants is you can grow more of it, uh, you can propagate and get, you know, it continuing on and on and on and as long as you take care of it it's always it always stays fresh and there are so many different plants and i'm not going to go into you know you know a giant list of all of them because it, i mean it just goes and goes and goes but what i would suggest is to check out this book uh there are lots of great books on it this is one written by a friend of mine uh which might sound like i'm just hawking my friend's stuff uh but i became a friend uh of this person, Tom Elpel, who wrote Botany in Today, because I thought he was really smart and knew a lot of stuff, so I kind of befriended him because I wanted to learn more about what he knew and everything, and you know we've become we've become friends over time. But uh, this was one of my favorite books of his before I even really knew him on when I was just a fan of his. And what this is about is it's about all sorts of different plants, and this is the new edition. He just sent me the new edition. Thank you very much, Tom. I was I was using the old edition for the longest time, which he autographed the new edition he sent to me. He didn't autograph. Not cool, Tom, but thank you very much. Uh, the new edition ha it has a lot of color photographs, also a lot of line drawings. Line drawings are a really great way of seeing a lot of the features of plants and everything. Um, but this goes over all sorts of North American plants, which can be found in different parts of the world as well. 
And what's great about this is it not only talks about the edibility of a lot of these plants, but it also talks about a lot of traditional medicinal uses and draws from a number of different sources. It's a really well-researched book and, and covers a, a huge broad range of different types of plants. And he, he groups them into really nice sort of groups that helps you to kind of remember sort of groups of different plants. Like, well, as a matter of fact, this dock right here is in the same family of plants as, uh, as rhubarb. Like I mentioned, that's why when I took a bite of it, it reminds me of rhubarb. Incidentally, on rhubarb, you don't want to eat the leaves. It's okay to eat the leaves off of this particular type of dock plant. Although if you eat a lot of them, I guess it gives you a little stomach episode. But just a little is delightfully sour. But this would be a great book if you're interested in getting into wild edibles and you would like to get some uh, medicinal knowledge about thing, things that you might be able to, uh, to use from your you know, natural landscape in you know, a pinch if you just don't have any medicines available to you, if you're caught out somewhere. Uh, because a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the excitement and a lot of the press when it comes to you know, SHTF collapse and, and uh, disease is you know, the big headline stuff. I mean, just this week, it's like Ebola in DRC, you know, uh, you know smallpox, weaponized anthrax. I mean, that's the stuff that gets all the headlines. But in in real life, a lot of times, you know, the issues that are coming up are stomach upset, diarrhea, rashes, and things like that. And there are a lot of plants that have a lot to say on how to help you with those types of things. And if you can get that information available to you, start practicing it now. If you get into a situation where you know, there's a collapse and you don't have access or ready access to medical help or, you know, you don't have medicines, there are a lot of plants that can help you. So it's smart to familiarize yourself with those things now. So that's it. Really good idea. I can't emphasize it enough. If you have plants in your area that you'd like to share with other people that you found are particularly helpful or plants that you cultivate in your house, like, you know, aloe, I can't grow this outside in New England here where I live, but I keep it in my house because it is so valuable. Um, you know, I'd love to hear about that kind of stuff in the comments below. So without any more further blabbing about that, uh, here's a clip from next week. Next week is a pretty informative episode. It's another one of those ones where I really go, go through, uh, you, know, you know, how to do uh, a topic. But it also has some huge plot twists coming up. There are some big plot twists happening in the ser series. Big, big ones. Like, almost as big as, like, the first episode when it was like, holy crap, there's aliens. <laughs> there are some big, uh, big plot twists coming up, uh, and they, they start next time on the series. So, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. So that's great, but there is one more step, obviously. We have to uh, sterilize them and put them in a, a, a wash of hot water to kill everything and uh, help to create the seal. So what I've had going on back here is a big uh, pot of water, kind of on the side of the stove, because I didn't want to heat the water up too, too much. And the reason for that, again, is because these are not real mason jars, and you don't want to be shocking the glass by taking it being you know, mildly warm and putting it into scalding hot water, because then it could crack. Now with mason jars, I could pull something like that, but even with mason jars, I try to baby them a little bit because I know that you get more life out of the glass. The literature that comes with real mason jars oftentimes says that the... Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.